Hello. So we have been talking about discrete time systems, systems where the input is a discrete time signal that is transformed into an output discrete time signal with the importance that these are computational algorithms for transforming those signals in control, in a controlled manner for particular applications. We mentioned that it's very important, the fact that this is not just mathematical filters that are not implementable, but they can be implemented through digital computation. And now we're going to see examples. And we're going to start with the simplest type of example, which is the moving average filter. Now, the moving average filter is a special type of a more general type of filters, which are finite impulse response filters, we're going to see shortly. So let's start with an example here. We are thinking about a system as a transformation. And x of n to y of n transformation. Okay. In this case, this is a transformation computed by averaging values of x of n in a moving window. So let's let's see an example, for instance, that we have. Let's imagine that we have a signal, or consider, for instance, a stock market signal, that is a discrete time um, signal. It's going up, it's going down, crashes, maybe recovers a little bit, crashes again. So here is our N, okay. So let's imagine that we want to smooth a signal like that. And we're going to see examples in Optiva MATLAB. Well, if we were to take, let's consider an example like three points here and average them, and then move again and do three points and average them, move again our window three points and average them, okay? using overlapping windows, what you will end up is with something that maybe looks something like this. A smooth signal, an average version. If we average more, maybe because we are taking five points or 10 points, a longer window, then it may be even smoother. This is like a low pass filter, okay? The bigger your window, the more it will smooth. Make it a bigger, it even will smooth more. Okay? Let's implement the, the system mathematically. So mathematically, all these discrete time systems have different equations. Not differential in continuous time. Uh, TI systems, you represent them with differential equations, integral differential equations. In discrete time, those differential equations are going to become difference equations. And the difference equation for this example, a three point moving average that is causal will be x of n, our output is one third our current input plus one third the previous input plus one third the previous input. Okay? Because n is a variable that is going to just keep going, right? This is a moving average filter. It's equivalent to picking three samples as we did before here. At any point in time, if this is n, for instance, the, the n that we are looking, that's a particular nk, 
particular value if that shows x of n you pick that value you pick the previous value and you pick the previous value and you compute the average okay. you can see that any time that you are adding the values of those signals with some coefficient you are doing some sort of smoothing and smoothing is removing high frequency components. So this, you should infer that this is a low pass filter. Okay. Now, it's important to think about these different equations, which completely characterize, completely, the discrete time systems, yeah? LTI systems, and we can start thinking about this in general, you could think any moving average filter, a moving average filter, we have the equation therefore, m x of n, and here you're going to have some value, b x of n plus b x of m minus 1 plus dot 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 b x of m minus m you can have this can be a 10 point moving average a 20 point moving average right and all these coefficients are the same in the case of the moving average it will be 1 over the window length that you have since we are starting at 0 it will be m minus 1 right Sorry, m plus 1. So, in general, in this case, b is going to be 1 over m plus 1, the window length. An example is what we did before, or if we do, for instance, a, a four point, it will be x of n, it will be 1 over 4, x of n, plus 1 over 4, x of m minus 1, plus 1 over 4, x of m minus 2, plus 1 over 4 x of m minus 3. You can see here 3. So the, the b is equal 1 over 3 plus 1. You pick here. That also happened there, right there. Or here. Right? Moving. Window is sliding. Average. You are averaging them together. Okay. Now, in general, we are going to see that this is a particular type of FIR filter, meaning what happens if we are allowing these coefficients to change, we will be able to create any frequency response that we want. It can be a low pass, high pass, and anything that is designed. A couple of things. This is a good point to introduce causality. Okay. We are going to classify all the systems as either causal or non-causal. Okay. A system is causal if the output depends on present and past inputs. And it is non-causal if it depends on future values, as an example. So, Output depends on present and past inputs. And non causal output depends on future. We we'll say, what do you mean by future? inputs. Well, if you recorded the signal, technically you can look ahead. So then non-causal systems only operate on signals that have already been recorded and you're doing some, some processing on them. So as an example, this moving average filter that we have, this three-point moving average, one-third x of n plus one-third x of m minus one 
plus one third x of m minus two is causal. It's an LTI, it's linear and time invariant. It's not going to change over time. You put the signal today, an hour later, tomorrow, same response. This is a summation of your or here you, with an with a scalar multiplication that's going to be a linear operation we are going to see. So it's an LTI, but but for the purpose of this discussion right now it is causal, meaning the output depends on the input, yes, but only on present and past inputs. You see n, n minus one, n minus two. As opposed to a non-causal, okay, so this is causal, non-causal implementation will be like this. Let's imagine we wanted to make this moving average center. So when we are at this point, instead of taking the, the, the point here, the previous and the previous, we wanted to do it symmetric. So let's go to another point here. That's our end. And we want to take this point, the point before and the point after. This point after, if we were in a real-time operation, in a real-time application, you don't have it. The, the sample didn't come in. But if you have the data that already has been stored, can we look ahead at the next sample? The answer is yes. And so this implementation may, may be 1 over n, 1 over 3 x of n minus 1 plus 1 over 3 x of n plus 1 over 3 x of m plus 1, right? So it was the previous one and they have the, to, to average those to produce our output, maybe here, our output, right? There is a, the average of those numbers. But notice, Present input, x of n, past input, that is that in memory, x of n minus 1, future input. So this is right there, non-causal, therefore. So this LTI is still linear type invariant, non-causal. Okay? In this case, you will not have a phase shift in the output with respect to the input, but it is a filter that could only be implemented in offline applications where the data is already available at least one sample ahead. So for instance, you have your speech already recorded and you want to do some operation to enhance it and the speech is recorded. Can you use a non-causal filter? The answer is yes. Can you do it also for images that have been recorded? The answer is yes. Can you do it in real-time applications, in a real-time speech processing, audio processing application? The answer is no, because you cannot basically get the samples of the future. Thank you.